Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. This video is about accruals and accounting for sales and purchases on credit. So the accruals, or some people call it the matching basis of accounting, what is that and how does it determine how we record transactions? Well, accrual accounting depicts the effects of transactions and other events and circumstances on a reporting entity's economic resources and claims in the periods in which those events occur. So when things happen, we record them in the period in which they happen. Not, as the definition uh, goes on to say, even if the resulting cash receipts and payments occur in a different period. Okay, so even if we pay for things in a different accounting period or we receive money in a different period, that doesn't really matter for when we record the transaction. We record transactions in the periods in which they occur, not when they're received or paid. So it's a very simple idea, but it is the basis of all accounting. It's the basis of what accounting does different to you know other methods of recording. You might think, okay, well, we can just keep a record of all the cash that comes in and the cash that goes out. And some small enterprises and things like uh, clubs and societies might do their accounting on that basis, cash in minus cash out. But that's not how we do the more sophisticated recording uh, for uh, bigger enterprises. For that, we use the accruals or matching basis of uh, accounting. And we record things when they occur, not when they're received or paid in cash. So the examples of the accruals principle, uh, sales are shown in the income statement before any cash is received. So when we make a sale, when we deliver goods to a customer uh, and they accept that we've made a sale to them and they accept they have an obligation to us uh, to pay us uh, for those goods at some point in the future, we can record the sale then when the goods are delivered, not uh, when the customer actually pays uh, for the goods. Costs are shown before cash is paid out. So if we receive something like an electricity bill, um, we immediately record that as an expense. Even though we might not have paid it yet, we might not be going to pay it for a month or two months, um, but uh, we must record it because you know, the using up of the electricity has occurred at that point. And the costs of non-current assets are shown in the periods that benefit from ownership of the assets. So what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about things like property, plant and equipment. And uh, uh, we, we let's say we buy a car for 20,000 uh, euro um uh well that's that's cash out now of twenty thousand euro but we don't record the expense right away we wait until we use up the benefits of the car and that process is called depreciation um so if the car last lasted five years we would record an expense of four thousand in each one of those uh years so that's another example of the accruals or matching principle. And what's the whole idea behind this? Well, the idea is that when we look at revenues minus expenses equals profit, that that profit should capture everything that actually happened during the accounting period, 
and not leave out things just because they haven't um, uh, either been received in cash or paid in cash. And that gives us a better measurement of profit than if we just looked at cash in, cash out. Think back on the example of the car. Uh, we, we would have 20,000 out in a particular accounting period um, and that might make that period look bad from a, 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 you know, a cash flow point of view but it might be perfectly fine from a profit point of view because the, 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 the benefits of the car that we used up in that, in that period were a lot less. So accounting for sales, how do we do that? Uh, well, we know how to account for sales from previous videos. Um, uh, if we have sold the goods in cash, we debit the bank and credit sales. In this case, we're not getting any cash from the sale. We're making a sale, we're delivering goods to a customer, but we're not getting any cash in. So we debit receivables, the special account in the balance sheet that holds the amount that's owed to us by our customer res receivables. We debit receivables rather than bank and we still credit uh, sales, okay? So that's how we account uh, for sales on credit. Accounting for purchases on credit. Well, we remember from previous videos how you account for a purchase. We, uh, if, you, if you've uh, done it using cash, we credit the bank uh, because the bank's going down with the amount of the purchase and we debit purchases. And when we're selling on credit, we still debit purchases, but this time we, um, uh, we credit the special account called payables, which shows up in the liability section of the balance sheet or the statement of financial uh, position. So as you can see, there isn't much change here. Um, instead of debiting or crediting bank, uh, we now are debiting or crediting receivables or payables. So um, let's take a little example of this. I just want to show you how this works in terms of the accounting equation and how it works in the income statement and in the statement of financial position. So supposing we have this company, let's call them Scon Limited. Uh, they buy goods for 300 on credit and immediately sell them for 500 to a customer who would pay for them in three months time. So both of these transactions are on credit. Neither of these transactions have an impact on the bank account. So we start off here uh, in this column here um, with uh, the accounts of this company before this transaction takes place. So this is before, okay? We we'll put a B up here for before all down here. Uh, so they have some property plant equipment, they have inventory, they have bank here. We keep an eye on that as we're going through. They have equity share capital, retained earnings there. Um, and uh, they have revenue already clocked up for this year, 20,000 purchases, 15,000. And they have some expenses down here, giving us a profit of 2,500. Now let's go through what happens when they make the purchase on credit and when they make the sale on credit. So this column here is the purchase column. Uh, we're going to do the purchase in this column. And uh, what's going to happen is we are going to debit purchases. So this uh, down here, we're going to debit purchases with 300, which is the amount of the purchase. But rather than crediting bank, we are going to credit the payables account up here in the, um, uh, in, the, in the statement of financial position. Just note here, this bit here is the income statement. This bit up here is the statement of financial position. Probably should have said that at the start. Um, okay, and, uh, and just to check here, you know, um, the statement of financial position balances. Uh, so that's all good as well. 
So that's the purchase. We've now got a 300 euro liability that we didn't have before and a 300 euro cost that we didn't have before. The next thing we have to do is record the sale and that's done in this column here. Um, uh, the sale increases our revenue. So it's 500 credit to revenues. I'll just draw a square box around that. And rather than debiting bank, we're now going to debit receivables because we're going to um, uh, receive this money in the future from the customer. They're not giving it to us straight away. So those are those two transactions recorded. Um, and uh, wh what does our balance sheet look like now? Well, we have an extra 500 of receivables. We have an extra 300 of payables. Um, and you can see our total assets there is 14,000. So it has gone up um, and our liabilities have also gone up by 300. So how do we balance the whole thing out? Well, what we do now is we look at, down at the income statement and you can see that the income statement is going to have to increase by 200 because revenues have increased by 500, costs have only increased by 300. So profit down here, P, has gone up by 200 and we now have profit of 2700 it also means that retained earnings go up by 200 to 9700 and everything now balances again so what's the difference between the beginning and the end well we now owe somebody 300 we are owed 500 by our customer and we have 200 extra profit. So I hope this example makes it clearer how these kind of credit transactions filter through the system and how uh, the accounting equation is still in balance after you do these kind of transactions. These are the journal entries for the transactions, just to be complete. The uh, purchase of goods on credit we debit purchases 300, credit payables 300. And the journal entry to record uh, sale of goods on credit, we debit receivables, the asset side 500, and we credit sales, the revenue side 500. So a summary of what we're doing here. Transactions are recorded when they occur rather than when they're received or paid in cash. Sales are recorded as an increase in revenue and an increase in an asset. Sales on credit, I should say. Uh, oh yeah, in an asset. Either the bank or receivables. If we get the cash straight away, we increase the bank. If it's a, a transaction on credit, we increase receivables. Purchases are recorded as an increase in expense in the income statement and an increase in either payables or um, a decrease in bank. So we either create a liability, which is uh, that we're gonna to have to pay off in the future, or we decrease bank straight away if it's a cash purchase. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.